and I don't want to arrive uh, to the time that I'm going to the pitch and I'm not enjoying. So I just want to to put an end before that happens. Throughout his career, Fernando Torres has made soccer a cakewalk. The blonde mane, the youthful face, and the killer instinct of a striker. The child from the suburbs of Madrid was prepared to lose. He finally won everything. In Spain and in England, whether in his club or in the national team during his 18-year career, El Nino became a symbol. The determination of the Colchoneros, the jewel of the Reds, and the Blues of the misunderstood. A look back at the unique journey of Fernando Torres. For me, the ser del Atlético is the insistir, the luchar el levantarse cada vez que uno se cae y elegimos nuestro equipo de fútbol por cómo somos nosotros. On May 27th, 2001, Fernando Torres made his debut for Atletico Madrid against Leganes. At that time, the Colchoneros was in the second division and the club was looking for a new hero. For that, what better than a child of Madrid? Born in Fuenlabrada, a suburb of the capital, the young Fernandez was immersed in the culture and values of Atleti by his grandfather. So imagine his reaction when his grandson tells him that he's joining Rohi Blanco's training center at the age of 11. The obstacle course is just the beginning for Fernando Torres. In any case, this is the message that Luis Aragonés tried to communicate to him when he takes over Atletico in 2001. The former Barca coach is particularly demanding of the Fuenlabrada star and insists on his individual progress. There are two reasons for this. On the one hand, Fernando Torres has potential. On the other hand, the club has been struggling for too long. The one his teammates nicknamed El Nino is going to make a significant difference. At 17 years old, the kid is playing his first professional season and he's already established himself as a key player for the Royo Blancos. The result? On April 27, 2002, Atletico finally returned to the top flight of Spanish soccer. Torres, on the other hand, became the symbol of Atleti's revival. The club's youngster inherited the captain's armband and in the space of a few seasons learned to be quite effective. And even though he has not managed to win any trophies with Atletico, his his beloved club slowly regained its place on the national stage. But the kid wants to take a step forward in his career. In the summer of 2007, Torres gave in to Rafael Benitez's sirens and joined Liverpool for 36 million euros. Children do not stay forever. El Nino is all grown up. In England, Torres becomes the hope of a club that has not won the Premier League since 1990, a pressure to which has added the weight of the transfer and of history. When he arrived in the Mersey, the striker became the second most expensive Spanish player of all time behind the mythical Gaisca Mendieta. In addition, he inherited a symbolic number, the number nine of a certain Robbie Fowler. It did not take long for Torres to dispel any doubts. In his first season, the Spaniards scored 33 goals in 46 games in all competitions. Logically, the Spanish coach, Luis Oganes, called Torres to participate in the Euro. Despite the presence of Iniesta, Javi, Sergio Ramos, and Ica Casillas in his ranks, La Roja is one of the outsiders. After all, the last international trophy won by Spain was in 1964, until Fernando stepped in. Against Germany, the red striker scored the only goal of the final, synonymous with victory and prestige. After that match, Torres is simply considered one of the best players in the world. Evidence of this, he finished on the Ballon d'Or podium behind Lionel Messi and Cristiano Ronaldo. In 2009, Liverpool, buoyed by the Gerrard Torres duo, went on to finish second in the league just behind Manchester United. But just as he was expected to make a name for himself, the following season the Spaniards suffered an injury that kept him out of the action for over three months. To the great despair of Liverpool, who without their star striker finished seventh in the league. From then on, the story becomes more complicated for El Nino. Injuries give way to uncertainty and then to doubt. A couple of months before the World Cup in South Africa, Torres underwent a knee surgery. He managed to recover just in time to take part in the tournament, but he was unable to shine in Nelson Mandela's land. This time, the hero of the final was Andre Iniesta. The Barca midfielder would send Spain to the top of the world for the first time in their history against the Netherlands. Torres, on the other hand, left the field again with an injury. His frailty becomes quite worrying to observers, but Chelsea are ready to get the Spaniard back on his feet. During the 2010 winter transfer window, the kid moved to London for just over 58 million euros. A betrayal for Liverpool, the beginning of problems for Torres. Welcome to adult life. As fate would have it, he made his debut a few days later against Liverpool. Chelsea lost and Fernando Torres' performance was disappointing. Worst of all, it's that the matches follow each other and look the same until the end of April 2011, 
the Spaniard will remain mute. The English press is not afraid to say it. He's a flop. Though he doesn't break down in front of the media just yet, the beginning of the 2011 to 2012 season will be the end of him. Four games, zero goals. Atletico's child prodigy is virtually unrecognizable, but it is in the important moments that you recognize great players. Fernando Torres left Liverpool to win trophies. History shows that he made the right choice. After one of the worst seasons of his career with the Blues, El Nino bagged up the cup with the big ears. But the Fuenla Brada native has not finished making history. In the national team, the blue striker finished top scorer of the Euro with three goals, including one in the final against Italy. La Roja was once again crowned European champions. No national team had ever won three consecutive international titles. At club level, the following year, he had his best season as an individual at Chelsea, but above all, he won the Europa League. Along with Juan Mata, he became the first player to win the Euro, the World Cup, the Champions League, and the Europa League. However, the Nirvana was short-lived. The following year, Fernando Torres played less, scored less, and left Chelsea to join AC Milan. After this anecdotal experience in Lombardy, the young man decided to return home to Atletico Madrid. Over there, Fernando Torres' status has changed. He's no longer the child prodigy, but one of the mentors of Diego Simeon's squad. His mission? To pass on the club's passion and values to the generation that will follow him. El Cholo's strategy pays off. In 2016, the Spanish striker came close to winning a first trophy with his parent club. In the Champions League final, Atletico went all the way to the end of the road against the other Madrid club before failing to win on penalties. In the league the following year, Torres was almost left out of the game forever. Against Deportivo La Coruna, the Spaniards suffered a head injury and lost consciousness on the pitch. El Nino was quickly rescued and the worst was avoided. In 2018, his love affair with Atleti came to an end. Before saying goodbye, Fernando Torres won the Europa League and his beloved club. A victory that definitely marked the end of an era. The Spaniard packed his bags and headed to Japan for a final spell in search of peace and quiet. You choose your club based on who you are. This is a sentence that perfectly sums up Fernando Torres' career. Atletico needed renewal. He became the symbol. Liverpool needed hope. He became the hero. And Chelsea needed conquest. He became the counterexample. Football needed humanity. He became the memory of it. Is Torres one of the best Spanish players of all time? Thank you for watching our video. If you liked it, don't hesitate to talk about our channel around you to like, share, and subscribe. And we'll see you soon for a new video. Ciao!